Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and while we're not quite doing a meta breakdown just yet, the new set, March of the Machines, is coming out on Tuesday, so I thought I'd cover a couple day one deck lists. Uh, if you want to try out some of the new cards, some ideas, some of these I've played during early access, I also pulled together a couple lists um, from other content creators. I will link their videos and credit them, uh, so if you want to see gameplay of it, it'll be included. Um, but really this is just kind of highlighting five decks to give you some ideas, get the, the brain's juices turning uh, as we kind of brew in the new set. Um, as soon as the data is available uh, from Untapped, I'll do a full curated win list as we do every single week on the channel. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in getting like statistical base analysis in terms of the best decks, uh, best way to spend your wild cards, everything like that. So we'll have that hopefully out by the weekend. That's usually when I can first start getting the data from Standard. Um, in addition, I will list uh, a bunch of different decks as well, not necessarily featured in here, but I played about 10 different decks during early access. I'll link all those as well if you're interested. Uh, we played like Salti Reanimator, Draw 2, um, played a whole bunch of different decks, Domain, a whole, like, it was really fun, the set. Um, so we will jump into it. Uh, the first deck up, and this was the deck I was actually most impressed by, and it's a deck that I really just never want to see my opponent play Brotherhood's End. It is a Jeskai Tokens list. So what we're getting in Tokens is the addition of Monastery Mentor, reprint into Standard. 3 mana, 2-2 two, two Prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one White Monk creature with Prowess. Um, so you're pairing that with Third Path Iconoclast to give you that like young Pyromancer-style effect. We also got a one of the partners in this deck, Baral and Carry Zev. Um, so this allows us to kind of double cast spells in a way. Uh, so for three mana, two, four, first strike menace, decent stats on its own. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a card type with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. Now notably this says cast as opposed to just play. So you do get the cast triggers. So double prowess, double token, stuff of that nature. If you don't, you create first mate Ragavan. A 2-1 red monkey token negates the haste till end of turn. So it's another way to make some tokens, double up on your spells. Um, in this deck, I'm also playing Wedding Announcement. So I saw a lot of the other decks, folks are trying out like Balmore, higher end spells. I really liked Wedding Announcement because it gave us the additional tokens. It could provide us some sort of card draw. And it was an anthem effect that we could eventually outscale, especially with a wide board. But most importantly, because it gives us another way to make tokens, triggers the non-creature condition. It allows us to play basically free spells in this deck. We have Meeting of the Minds, which this card was the card that completely flew under my radar and once it was cast against me, was like my eyes open. Uh, four mana, draw two cards at instant speed, not great rate. But in this deck, because you can tap Baral or Third Class, a Third Path, you can basically make this free uh, by tapping creatures through Convoke by paying the cast. So this is effectively zero mana, draw two at instant speed. That can trigger the instant speed for Baral and Kari Zev on your opponent's turn. In addition, we also have Stoke the Flames. Uh, same idea, four mana, tap two red creatures, uh, and then just your other creatures, and this deals four damage to any target. So uh, eight free spells in a way. Uh, we also got like another Reckless Impulse. You can play Ren's Resolve or Reckless Impulse. They do the same thing. Exile two cards. You can play them until end of turn. I went with Consider as well as Ancestral Anger. I wanted to try to get more cards that replace themselves on draw. It also provided Trample when you kind of got something large enough. Um, so I like that. The one card that was kind of the last bit was Play With Fire. Now you could play Voltage Surge. Notably, you do make artifacts with the third path. Uh, so Voltage Surge does the same thing in terms of dealing two damage to a creature, but also can be scalable to four damage. The bonus with Play With Fire is it's always something you can cast. It doesn't require you to have a target. You can go face. It can also help set up your scries in addition. So something to keep in mind when you try it out like that. Mana base is down here. Well, I'll paste the link. You can copy the mana base. Nothing exciting with that. Um, so I played that deck. I have a video up. The other deck I played, and then we'll cover some other ones that I was quite impressed with, was Rakdos Midrange Chandra. So we tried out a couple different cards in the shell. But basically, I wanted to build around Chandra's static ability, um, doubling up basically Invoke Despairs. Whenever you cast an instant or sorceries, you get to basically copy it. So you get two Invoke Despairs, two of any removal spells. Um, there's a lot of utility in something like that. 
Uh, it lets you ramp, it lets you exile the top five cards of your library, uh, and cast spells out of something like that. And then the, the minus X also came up a few times, deals X damage to uh, up to each, sorry, to up to each, cre yeah, I can't talk today. Deals X damage to each of up to two targets. Um, so this was often like, say, four damage, kill a creature, four damage, face, keep your Chandra around. Now there's a few ways you can kind of tailor the removal. Something I considered was just doing like lightning strikes if you want to get more aggressive. Um, but I played kind of it in a traditional uh, uh, Racto shell. You have cut downs, go for the throats, I'll cover in a sec. Uh, braids, blood tithe harvesters, graveyard trespasser, fables, shieldred, invoke despair. Sh uh, shieldred's edict. One thing after playing a lot of games, there's a lot of incidental artifacts that I was running into. Might have just been because of Phyrexian, people were trying out the Phyrexian tribal decks, but a lot of the incubate tokens, for example, are artifacts. So I often had go for the throat stuck in the hand. It may be a return to Infernal Grasp in some numbers. That's really going to be predicated on where the kind of decks lie. If we still see mono white, mono red, and best of one, stuff like that, then you're going to want to shift and go with uh, go for the throat, or if you see a lot of artifacts, go Infernal Grasp. Uh, the card I was trying out in some numbers is, and it's obviously awful to look at like this, uh, Invasion of Asgul, two mana, battle, opponent sacks a creature, or Planeswalker, loses a life. You can attack it to four. Um, so it's basically just another way to play like Shieldred's Edict, deals with Planeswalkers or creatures. Doesn't give you the flexibility to choose, but does do some drain. And then it allows you to attack it, so it gives you some value there. It flips into a 2 1 menace creature at the beginning of your end step, put a 1 1 counter on Ashen Reaper, but permanent was put into a graveyard from Battlefield this turn. So your deck's naturally trying to kill stuff. Uh, this just gets bigger and becomes an evasive threat. Um, medium on this, it's, it's only a, an uncommon, so it's not a huge wild card commitment to try it out more. The other card that we were trying out in some numbers, um, Against the go wide decks, this is basically, it's kind of like Brotherhood's End. The front side, you're paying one more mana. Uh, so, depending on your curve, how you want to consider that, you're paying one more mana for the flip side of it also being um, something you can attack into afterwards. This is just a sweeper for three. Uh, it becomes a ward, pay two life, four, four. Whenever you cast a spell, deals two damage each opponent. So, just a, a nice way to kind of deal additional damage, something we were trying out. And then lastly, Shieldred was another card um, in decks where you could kind of control your opponent's deck creatures a lot. It becomes better. I found that Shieldred was a little weak uh, against go wide decks because it's just a single sacrifice. But still, it did work. The flip side is fairly easy to get active. You just need your opponent needs eight cards in the graveyard. This deck's looking to kill a lot of stuff and go to the mid to late game, anyways. Flip side's very powerful. You destroy basically removal for a creature or planeswalker. Opponent discards three, they mills three, and then you uh, rise of the dark realms. Return all creatures from all graveyards to the battlefield, which you're killing stuff. Get it all back for value. Um, so that was Rakdos. Next up, this is Gruel Dinos by uh, Pizza Box MTG, another content creator. I'll link their socials. So this is kind of a mid rangey kind of ramp deck. So you have Armored Scrap Gorger to get ahead on mana. You have Deep Root Binder. Um, and again, to preface, these are all decks. I can't comment on these next three because I didn't play them, but they're kind of ideas if you want to try wild cards at your own discretion, as always, uh, for day one. I don't claim anything's a must build. Um, you spend your wild cards as you want, but if you want to try out ideas, if you have the cards, go for it. Uh, Deep Root Finder is a new card, so when it ever deals damage to a player or battle, surveil one. Then you may return a land from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is kind of pseudo ramp with Riveteer's Outlook. Uh, it basically sacks itself, finds some basics for you. Uh, there's also kind of pseudo ramp in Invasion of Ermagon, er Ergamon, whatever. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you create a treasure, then you can draw and discard a card. Uh, sorry, discard, then draw uh, a card. And then it flips and it becomes uh, Truga Cliff. Anger, 3-4 Trample, enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, you search your library for a land or battle put into your hand. Uh, you got Fables in there, Brotherhood's End, a new card in Nahiri's Warcrafting. Uh, basically, 5 damage to any creature, planeswalker, or battle. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the excess damage. You may exile it, put the rest on the bottom of your great library. You may play the card exiled this way till end of the turn. So just some card advantage, but also a main board answer to Shieldred. We also got the new card, Rampaging Raptor. 
uh, basically Questing Beast's uh, prehistoric friend. Four mana, four, four, trample haste, pump to give it some power. Whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, you can it deals that much damage to either a planeswalker or a battle. Um, and then an Atushi, a couple copies of the new Vorinclex, which I was actually quite impressed with. So notably, so five mana, six, six, trample reach, good stats on its own. Enters a battlefield, you search your library for up to two forests. Now notably it says forests, so you can go get Triome, you can get Jet Mirror's Garden, whatever it may be. So you get some fixing there. 8 mana to flip it, and when you flip it, you get to mill 10, put up to 2 creature cards from them, those milled onto the battlefield, distribute 7 counters on target creatures you control, and then target creatures, creatures you get, get 1 mana, tar- this creature fights a creature you don't control. Then it flips back to the Klex. And then kind of the top end, uh, you got Kogla and Yadaro, Ape Dinosaur Turtle, uh, the classic combination. Uh, so this is 6 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, enters the battlefield, gains Trample Haste on the turn, or fights a creature you don't control. You can also discard Kogla and Yadaro, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment, and then shuffle it uh, into your library and then draw a card. So some utility there. Then the big end dinos, Timorex Rex, just big chunky 8-H Trample Ward Haste Toxic, and the kind of the coolest card of the deck. This card every time it got cast against me absolutely wrecked me. So 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Itali Primal Conquer, Trample, and there's a battlefield. Each player exiles a card from the top of their library. Until they exile a, not, a non-line card, you may cast any number of spells from among the non Basically, you get you and your opponent, you get two spells to cast for free out of it. Uh, 10 mana or 9 Phyrexian, and it flips, and it becomes uh, Blightsteel Colossus Dino. So it's Trample, Indestructible, deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. Uh, 11 power so it can one shot your opponent technically so i'll link the video there we then go to a deck from ali eldrazi this is grixis hizuku kari combo um so how it works is you have hizuku kari so this is five mana five four flying enters a battlefield draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order when it dies exile the top card of your library target opponent loses life equal to its mana value if it's an instant or sorcery you may cast it without its mana cost so basically, the Hizuku and Kari with explosive singularity uh, does 20 damage to your opponent, basically. You reveal it, deals 10, you cast it, it deals another 10. So the kind of combo element of it is you set up, you get your Hizuku, and then you could sacrifice it to corrupt the conviction, which is basically just a new village rights style effect, kill him on the spot. You have diabolic intent that can also sacrifice him. Um, and then it's just in a Grixis shell. So you have your Blood Tithe Harvesters, Go for the Throats, Fables, Corpse Praisers, Kaido for Card Advantage, Brotherhood's End is Sweepers, another Kaido Planeswalker, uh, just for some card advantage, stuff like that. And then we have Invasion of Archivios, which you card text details is going to be our fun friend here. Uh, so as it enters the battlefield, you and others can attack it when Invasion of Arceus enters battlefield, search your library, graveyard, and or outside the game for an instant or sorcery card you own, reveal it, put it into your hand if you search your library this way, shuffle. Um, so a way to kind of tutor up for effects. And then when it flips, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, you may copy that spell, choose new targets for the copy. So just kind of a, a fork style effect afterwards. Um, I will have to include, it looks like there's a sideboard that I didn't include so didn't realize there was a wish board so i'll include that in the sideboard list and then a shield trade on the top end of the news deck so i'll add in that sideboard um for the uh the battle and then lastly uh this is selesnia pardon scales adjacent deck counters this is from jaffer mtg uh so this is a deck that's looking to put a number of one one counters on your creatures so we have hopeful initiate that gets bigger gets counters on it We have Iron Apprentice that gets counters and then lets you redistribute them when it dies. Uh, You have Surge of Salvation. You and Permanence you control gain Hexproof until end of turn. uh, And then prevent all damage that Black or Red sources would deal to creatures you control. So just kind of a protection effect. Uh, Homestead Courage put counters, kind of two spells in one. We have a new card in Botanical Brawler. Two mana, zero, zero, trample, enters battlefield with two one-one counters on it. Whenever one or more 1-1 counters are put on another permanent control, it's the first time 1-1 counters have been put on that permanent this turn, put a 1-1 counter on the Brawler. So it gets bigger with you doing other things. So it's nice because you don't have to necessarily target it. 
uh, it gets bigger just by you building other things. And trample is also a nice keyword in this deck. Gallic Readers can get counters itself. Ramp, you gain your life. Then we have Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, new legendary artifact. Two mana, whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters put on an artifact creature you control, put that many 1-1 one, one counters on it instead, plus one, so basically a bonus counter. And then two mana, you can put a counter on an artifact or creature you control at uh, sorcery speed. And it's actually nice because it's got cycling, so if you draw multiples, you can just cycle it away. So three copies of that. Beast Caller gets bigger whenever you cast other creatures. And we have another new card in Dusk Legion Duelist. 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, Vigilance, whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on the Dusk Legion, uh, draw a card. This ability triggers only once per turn. So some card advantage that you don't normally get in these hard and scaled decks. Uh, also, incidentally, a Soldier, so pretty decent in the Soldier builds if you're just looking to upgrade that spot, like that 2-drop spot. Uh, we then have Kodama of the West Tree. Uh, basically gives all your modified creatures anything with counters on it trample, and then whenever they deal damage, uh, you get to get a forest into your uh, from your library into play tapped. We have Tribute of the World Tree. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, you put two counters on it. So a nice little advantage there. And then we have two Arch Archangel Elspeths on the top end. Two mana for loyalty. Plus one, you get a white soldier token with lifelink. Minus two, put two one one counters on target creature. Becomes an angel in addition to this other type and gains flying. So evasion. And then lastly, minus six, return all non-line permanents with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So nice little board wipe insurance. Um, so that's it for the decks. Like I said, I'll link a bunch of my own into the playlist or into the deck list section if you want to see. Like I said, I've tried about 10 decks. Um, day one, don't go crazy. Stuff's going to work. Stuff's not going to work. Uh, make sure you have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Uh, and if you are having success with anything, let me know. But otherwise, I'll try to get the meta videos out as soon as possible. As a quick closing note, um, I, for the month of April, all money that I make for the month of April on YouTube is being donated to a local Toronto-based food bank. Uh, so if you want to help out, any views that you do to the channel is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one. Stay safe out there.